I want to talk in this segment about the um, great economist Thomas Sowell. There's a new uh, biography of Sowell published by a young writer for the Wall Street Journal. His name is, the writer's name is Jason Riley, and the book is just called Maverick, uh, a biography of Thomas Sowell. Uh, I got to know Tom Sowell because we were both fellows at the, um, at the Hoover Institution, and uh, we'd have, um, you know, lunch periodically. Typically, it was me, but it was also Sowell and his wife, who's also an economist. And Sowell would tell me kind of funny stories about his old days. Um, apparently, I remember one where he was, um, he had published his book, um, he'd written his book, Markets and Minorities, one of his first books. And he says, I sent it in uh, to the publisher, and in those days, uh, you mailed in the manuscript, and it was often a very long time before you heard back from the publisher. Sol says it was almost a year, and he had basically thought, he didn't know what happened to the book. And finally, he says he got back this package in the mail, and the publisher said that they had accepted it for publication. But he says, as I looked through the manuscript, every page had extensive writing and notes and queries and questions, which is, by the way, normal for publishers to do uh, with a manuscript. But Sol was outraged, and, and basically, he, re he refused to make any changes. He wrote back to the publisher, basically saying, listen, uh, I believe that I am the world's expert on writing my own book. And so either you publish the book as is, Oh, but I'm not willing to make uh, any of these edits or respond to some, uh, you know, junior staffer who's come up with all these 300 questions. And Sol goes, it was another year before he heard back from the publisher. And then he received a published book in the mail. So they decided, oh, they decided to go for it. But um, this is Sol. He was a very, he was a guy with an independent mind. Um, and Jason Riley tells this very interesting story about him. He grew up under segregation. He grew up poor. Uh, he became a Marxist in his youth. And why? Because he would take the bus um, from the tenements in, on the outskirts of New York down 125th Street, Harlem. And he'd take the bus and it would go right up Fifth Avenue, go up Madison Avenue, and he'd see all these beautiful um, designer stores and all these rich people walking their poodles. And then he'd see the bus go into the horrible, rundown neighborhoods of Harlem and all the tenements and all the suffering, and he'd get off there. And so he goes, wow, Marxism kind of explains why the world is like this. And it was only when Tom Sowell, when he went to Howard University, he was really smart. He was able to transfer from Howard to Harvard. And then, uh, which, was, which was, he said, uh, a move to a much more uh, challenging, more difficult institution. But then he went from Harvard to Chicago, uh, which he said was the most difficult and demanding of all. And Chicago at that time had the so-called Chicago Boys. These are the free market economists, people like Milton Friedman, George Stigler, uh, George Schultz, a number of others. Uh, doing very rigorous academic work, and many of them actually ended up, I think some 13 of them ended up getting Nobel Prizes. So this was by far the best economics department in the country. And the thing Thomas Sowell learned is that at the end of the day, it's not really about theories. It is about how theories match up with the real world. I remember one area of his work that I learned a lot from, and I, I used this both in the liberal education, my first book, and The End of Racism, is Tom Sowell's concept of the mismatch. Because in affirmative action, you often think I'm doing a favor to a black kid uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of add 100 points to his SAT score. Even though he's a C student, I'm going to treat him like an A student. I'm going to let him into a college or her into a college that they wouldn't otherwise have gotten into. And, and by doing this, I'm showing my unbelievable racial magnanimity. But Tom Sowell's point is you're taking a kid who is not a bad kid, is in fact an average kid, would actually probably have done fine at 400 average institutions in the country. And you're putting them in an incredibly competitive environment where they will do poorly, they will become demoralized, they will also begin to have racial doubts about themselves. Am I not smart because I'm black? And, you're, and, and you put it in other people's minds that they're not doing well because they're black. You're doing all of these perverse effects in the name of something that you think is enlightened, or as we say now today, woke. So Sol realized that you've got to look at policies and programs for their results. Um, 
Sol began to study the work of the Swedish leftist uh, Gunnar Myrdal. And Gunnar Myrdal, who won the Nobel Prize for Economics in 1974, advanced all these theories about the third world, like third world economies need to be developed through foreign aid. If you don't give them foreign aid, they're never going to develop. This was kind of one of Myrdal's premise. And Sol writes, quote, I got no sense that Myrdal actually investigated these theories of his and compared them with anything that actually happened. Because Seoul noticed that there were economies in the third world, specifically post-war Japan. Remember, Japan had been leveled to the ground. Taiwan, South Korea, Singapore, the so-called Asian tigers. And they were getting no foreign aid, but they were growing dramatically. In fact, you could argue they supplied early on the model for China. The China model isn't something completely new. It is essentially the model of these Asian tigers now transferred to the largest society in Asia. So Seoul noticed that here's Mardal and he's spinning out all these theories the way leftists do without ever bothering to ask how does this theory play out in the real world. Thomas Sowell has written, I believe, now close to 50 books. Um, they're worth reading. Perhaps his most famous is called Basic Economics. There's another one called Intellectuals and Society. What I like about Sol, he writes in this kind of lucid style laced with examples. So even though he is a trained economist, he doesn't write in the dry uh, academic style. He writes in a way that you can really understand what he's saying and you get the feeling that he is talking to you directly. Uh, he is a, an inspiration to so many of us, a kind of giant in the conservative pantheon. Um, and I'm really pleased that um, uh, Jason Riley has done this book, which is a revealing tribute to a great man, Thomas Sowell.